Women Army officers win big in Supreme Court. The court says the criteria for women getting a permanent uh, position in the commission is arbitrary and irrational. Also adds the society structures are created by males for males. Mumbai preparing for 10,000 cases a day. No cause of panic still, says the government. Only RT-PCR negative passengers allowed in Bengaluru and they will be stamped as well. Overall in the country, the daily cases have crossed 50,000. It's the highest since October. COVID variants now driving up the cases or not is what the experts are divided upon. While war between Maharashtra government is escalating, it's got the former Mumbai police commissioner opposition on one hand. The war now in courts, even as a new CCTV footage appears. In Delhi, now the chief minister needs to get a lieutenant governor nod for all executive orders. Amati party is outraged after this bill has been passed by Parliament. Good evening, you're watching NETV 24-7. I'm Sonal Merotra Kapoor. Let's start with a milestone day, really, for women in the country, especially in uniform. The Supreme Court today allowed the pleas of several women SSE officers seeking grant of permission in the army and held that the annual confidential report evaluation process was flawed and it was discriminatory, also saying it was arbitrary, even irrational, adding that we must recognize here that the structure of a society has been created by males for males. And this, these were the words of Justice Chandrachud in Supreme Court. Here's why this matters so much. Structures of our society are created for males by males. The Supreme Court coming down hard on the army for its medical criteria for inducting women officers in permanent commission after it ruled over a year ago that women officers must be granted permanent commission as well as in command positions at par with male officers. Several women officers had moved the Supreme Court against the army saying that despite the judgment of the 615 women officers of the short service commission eligible for permanent commission only 277 had made it to the final list. Allowing the plea, the bench comprising Justice D.Y. Chandrachud and Justice M.R. Shah said, the Army's criteria for permanent commission for women officers is arbitrary, irrational. Structures of our society created by males for males. The pattern of evaluation deployed by the Army to implement the judgment of SC disproportionately affects women. The discrimination has caused an economic and psychological harm and an affront to their dignity. Women officers who have remained in service are those with the tenacity to hold on and to meet exacting standards of performance. This is rendered infinitely more difficult when society relegates functions of domestic labor, caregiving and childcare exclusively on the shoulders of women. Women officers have not come to the court seeking charity or favor. The Supreme Court has held that all the women officers who have fulfilled 60% cut-off grade in the selection board held in September last year shall be entitled for permanent commission subject to their meeting medical criteria and receiving disciplinary and vigilance clearance. With camera person Salsi Ganja, this is Arvind Gunasekhar for NDTV. Let's shift our focus to COVID numbers now a cause of real concern in the country. But before we get into the numbers, exactly a year after lockdown was imposed in the country, to contain the COVID pandemic, India is seeing a second wave of infection and rising at a steeper rate than the first time we got it. Now, while there is no lockdown and streets are crowded, Mumbai is preparing for 10,000 cases a day, ramping up the number of hospital beds across the city. Authorities are aiming for about 21,000 more beds at this point. The big concern, though, is that the disease in a first is spreading faster in small towns and even districts. And it's not just Maharashtra, it's actually going to other states, states like UP and Gujarat showing the highest spike. Exactly a year back, a lockdown was imposed in the country to contain COVID pandemic. Now, there is virtually no lockdown, the crowds are back. And India is seeing a second COVID-19 wave that is steeper than the first one. The experts aren't sure what is causing this. 
While the government claims that the mutation in virus is not the reason behind it, the experts are stating that they are looking into all the possibilities that what exactly is the reason that the number of cases are seeing a steep rise in Maharashtra. India's second wave is rising far steeper than the first one. Cases have crossed 50,000 and over 1 lakh cases have been added in just 48 hours, the first time since October. So what is the reason? Officials say it's not the three foreign and one Indian strain. India has hundreds of these cases, but that's not enough to explain the surge according to the government. But if it's people refusing to wear masks, keep a social distance and other such precautions, then how come it's only surging in a few states? And why is Maharashtra so badly hit when there are election campaign crowds in other states? Uh, possible answers could be that many people have been earlier asymptomatic mm. and already have antibodies and therefore in certain states uh, number of people having the antibodies in their serum is higher. So there are multiple causes by which we can actually get a rise in the cases. Mm. Number one is uh, that people forget uh, that uh, we have to follow COVID appropriate behavior. So people start behaving as if it's a normal times are back again. A major surge in the second wave is the surge there is in the smaller towns. The 10 states the government identified last week with over many districts of concerns, including smaller towns, have since then added 2.67 lakh new cases, up almost 70% in just a week. The rapid spread of COVID-19 in smaller districts is the biggest concern of the government, given how easily it can spread to villages and the state of healthcare. As the second wave of COVID-19 is being witnessed in the country, the healthcare experts are reiterating the warning that if COVID-appropriate behaviour is not strictly implemented by the government and adopted by the people, the number of COVID cases will continue to rise. With camera person Ashok Mahale, I'm Akshay Dongre for NDTV. So we mentioned the places which are a growing reason of concern. Let's take it city and state wise, starting with Bengaluru and what are the curves there? So Bengaluru city will now start giving access to people from outside only if you have a negative RT-PCR test for this is applies for any visitor and this applies from 1st of April. Special booths have also been set up for testing and hubs like uh, railway station, airports etc. These booths have been set up as well. Also they are putting a stamp on your hand if you are found to be COVID positive. Apart from Bengaluru, the big percentage surge really is happening in Uttar Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, Delhi as well. Uttar Pradesh, for example, daily cases are up almost three times today. Delhi's average daily cases have doubled. Kerala average daily cases rising once again. This is after a decline, remember, that they showed over the past few days. And the highest average daily cases remain to be in Maharashtra and Punjab, which is growing at 60%. And all this is happening when we have completed a year of lockdown. So what's really changed from then to now? This next story will tell you. A few hesitant words, but encouraging signs that this young girl and her four siblings from Chhattisgarh's Bemetara district are finally beginning to move on from the extreme trauma of 2020's COVID-19 lockdown caused by the death of their parents. 45-year-old Krishna Sahu and 40-year-old Pramila, migrant workers hungry and desperate after the lockdown who tried to cycle 750 kilometers from their workplace Lucknow to their Chhattisgarh village in May only to die in this road accident minutes after they started. Four-year-old Channi and 18-month-old Nikhil, who were with their parents, survived with injuries and became the faces of anguish and tragedy experienced by millions of migrant workers and their families last year. This is Lucknow's uh, Jankipuram area and these temporary shelters or homes are where Krishna Sahu, his wife and two children used to live. They used to live in this home. I remember visiting this uh, home last year. Ten months after their parents died, 
Chandni and Nikhil finally made the journey to their Chhattisgarh village, this time by train, reuniting with their three other siblings who live in the care of Krishna's eldest brother. So, the first time of 5 lakh, it was now 15 or 20 days before. विधायक महोदय आकर को चेक देकर दे चला गया है और चेक को जा करके वो बड़े हमारा बड़े भाई के नाम से आया था चेक ये तो उसको जा करके वो बैंक में जमा कर दिए हैं अब मैंने एक साल बाद आपको चेक मिला है अभी एक साल बाद अभी अभी पहले पंद्रह दिन पंद्रह बीस दिन पहले एट द विलेज चांदी एंड निखिल्स गार्जियन से एन एक्सटेंडेड स्टे इन दिलेज इज नॉट एन ऑप्शन दो पैसे के लिए चले जाते हैं मजदूरी करने वहाँ पर देश में तो भी फिर जाएंगे क्या उत्तर प्रदेश हाँ तो जाएंगे है ही है भाई क्या करेंगे बच्चों को लेके फिर अपना कुछ काम रह गया है भैया का अभी, अभी आने वाला है उन भाई बड़े भैया का मेरा बरसी आने वाला है तो बरसी और उर्सी उनका निपटा कर मैं फिर जाऊंगा लखनऊ विद सोमेश पटेल इन रायपुर दिस इज आलोक पांडे एन डी टीवी tragic story several of them all around us but let's shift our focus now to what's happening in maharashtra where the war between the maharashtra government on one side and the former mumbai police commissioner and the opposition on the other this war is now playing out in the courts the maharashtra government has dug its heels saying that anil deshmukh will continue but the government is considering a probe into the allegations as well this time by a retired judge Suspended Mumbai cop Sachin Waze will remain in NIA custody till April 3. After the anti-terror probe agency booked him under the stringent anti-terror law, the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act or UAPA. The NIA told the court that unaccounted bullets were found at Waze's home and he hasn't come clean on them. There is also no clarity on bullets for his service revolver. DNA and forensic samples were taken. Evidences available now need to be processed. Waze's lawyer Abad Ponda argued that just gelatin sticks by themselves don't qualify as explosives as enlisted in the NIA Act. They have to be accompanied by detonators etc. He also argued that the NIA Act applied to terrorist plots to strike a community or the country and in this case there seems to be no such indication. Meanwhile as per the Supreme Court's orders former Mumbai Police Commissioner Parambir Singh moved the Bombay High Court against his transfer. In his petition, he repeated the charges against Anil Deshmukh, alleging that the Home Minister used to meet Vazir directly, bypassing senior officers, also echoing Devendra Fadnavis's charge that an investigation by former Commissioner of Intelligence Rashmi Shukla pointed to bribes for transfers and police postings. The allegations and counter-allegations between the Maharashtra opposition and the Maharashtra government have now reached the Bombay High Court. And former Police Commissioner Parambir Singh's petition not only targets Home Minister Anil Deshmukh for alleged malpractices, but also the Chief Minister and Deputy Chief Minister for inaction. In Mumbai with camera person Rajendra Dhyalkar, Saurabh Gupta, NDTV. On to the national capital now, where the government, which is now left with no powers really, with the parliament uh, clearing the GNCTD amendment bill, all executive orders of the Delhi cabinet are to be subject to approval by the left-hand governor, left-hand governor who is appointed by the central government. Now, this has led many Delhiites thinking, so what did we vote for? Was it the LG or was it the government? Now, Arvind Kejriwal has taken this quite personally, saying that this is because he is growing in popularity. Listen in from the Deputy Chief Minister, Manish Sisodia. Kejriwal ji fighter. Kejriwal ji in ke... इन अड़चनों से इनकी इन तिगड़नों से रुकने वाले नहीं है जनता भी देख रही है इस राजनीति को कि किस तरह से मोदी जी जिसको देश की जनता ने इतना सम्मान दिया आज वो नेगेटिव राजनीति पर उतर आए हैं और केजरीवाल जी की बढ़ती लोकप्रियता से असुरक्षित महसूस कर रहे हैं तो पॉलिटिकल भी जवाब मिलेगा और साथ साथ में बाकी जो भी ऑप्शन है सबको एक्सप्लोर कर रहे हैं हम अपने लीगल एक्सपर्ट से बात कर रहे हैं all right let's shift our focus to battleground west bengal where a battle of bjp leaders were there today amit shah held about five meetings yogi adityanath rajnath singh gautam gambhir and mamta banerjee also upped her daily quota of rallies from three to four covering at least two districts now the showstopper really today was mithun chakravarti the dada of bengali cinema the disco dancer of bollywood he is making his first appearance for BJP in Bengal today, not as a candidate though, as a star campaigner and his first stop 
was the Bankura district. NDTV was there. Mithun Chakraborty is very popular in Bengal and that is an understatement. But even he must have been taken aback at this. The reception he received at Shaltura, 220 kilometers from Kolkata, right from the helipad for his first road show as BJP's star campaigner. On every lip, at every opportunity, dialogues from his hit films, the ones he had belted out on 7th March, the day he joined the BJP. Ami jol dhodao noi, bele bodao noi. Ami akta cobra, gokro ami. Tumna ka ke dekhte is show? Mithun ke. Helicopter? Helicopter ka dekhte is show, Mithun ka dekhte is show. Mithun ka dekhte is show. Helicopter ka dekhte is show, Mithun ka dekhte is show. See, my relation with Bengal people is not a hero and fan. It's from the heart. Amar er hido er sammondo, amar aftar sammondo. So I, I connect with them from my heart. Swarms of supporters mobbed his motorcade and followed him every step of the way. And he is not even a candidate for BJP in the elections. But is he thinking about it now? Election lade? Aap fir bolenge na, main isi matlab se aaya hu. Sorry. No, no, no. I have no, I have no political ambition. I've been saying I follow. The Bengal superstar was a Trinamool MP till five years ago. His return to politics for BJP came after a very public meeting with RSS chief Mohan Bhagwat. The BJP wants Mithun to contest the polls. The Raj Bihari seat in Kolkata was reserved for him, but so far he has not said yes. There is time still for Mithun to file nomination. Will he? Won't he? is an open question. So is the other big one. Can he turn the frenzy of his fans into votes? Can he give the BJP a last mile advantage? While adversaries BJP and TMC weigh the pros and cons for the disco dancer, a day to remember when his stardom and the political aspirations of Bengal's BJP supporters turned into a heady mix. Michunda has been offered a new role, unlike anything he has played before. Can he turn the Bengal polls into a super hit for the BJP? At Chaltura with G.D. Shankar, Monideepa Banerjee, NDTV. Welcome back. Now, Supreme Court uh, today squashed the FIR against journalist Patricia Mukim, editor of the Shillong Times. And while squashing that FIR that was actually launched for allegedly creating communal disharmony through a Facebook post, Supreme Court said that free speech of the citizens of this country cannot be stifled by implicating them in criminal cases. The judgment was delivered by a, gen, uh, by a bench of uh, judges uh, Nageshwara Rao and Ravindra Bhatt on the plea filed by Mukim against the Meghale High Court order dismissing her petition to squash the criminal proceedings. The analysis of the Facebook post written by Mukim shows that no case of hate speech is made out. That is what the Supreme Court added. So it's a great day really to get that clarity from Supreme Court. And we are now joined on the phone line by Patricia Mukim uh, live with us now. Patricia, congratulations. First thoughts on sir. what the Supreme Court has said today. Uh, I feel vindicated because my Facebook post was actually a call for maintaining the rule of law and for ensuring that you know that that violence has to end some at some point I have seen violence in this state from 1979 and it's targeted violence and I feel as a human person you know and as a journalist I think we should transcend community race religion and everything 
And uh, I wrote that post with that in mind. I didn't consider myself to be a member of this community or that community. I wrote especially because I feel that human rights have to be upheld in all circumstances and for all irrespective of caste, community or creed. That was my call. My call was to the, to the especially to the local traditional institution that uh, looks after the affairs of that area where the you know, the assault happened. I said that they should know who are the criminal elements in their area and round them up because if we do not do this, if we do not uphold the rule of law, violence will escalate. It will hmm. only continue. Right. Patricia, you have really said it all. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and kudos to you. More power to you in the days to come. Thank you. All right, and finally, uh, let's uh, end the bulletin with this news. A biker getting stopped by a policeman often means bad news. But here is a heartwarming story of a Tamil Nadu cop who stopped a biker to offer him an opportunity to be a good cemetarian. A uh, police officer asked biker chasing the bus and delivered the medicine to an old woman who dropped her medicine bottle while traveling. Then the man uh, fires up his bike and chases the bus. The video shows how the biker finds the bus and asks for the driver to actually pull over and do the needful. Okay. Now, isn't that a lovely way to end your day? With that, it's a wrap. Good night.